Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the Fantry Radio on this 2022-23 Ford Transit. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the Fantry screen. Then, once removed, we'll head over to the bench, show you the parts that we're going to need, including the radio, dash kit, and wiring harness. Then, we'll come back here to get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do to get this radio on out is there's actually a little trim piece on the back that's going to expose two seven millimeter or nine thirty second screws. Okay, there's our trim piece. It's going to have one, two, three, four clips to hold that in. Now once that trim piece is up and out of the way, you'll see three screws here on the top that have to be removed in order for the radio to come on out. Now once those three screws have been removed, the rest of the just radio itself is just held in with clips. I'm gonna give it a tug here. Just like so. Now you'll have two harnesses on the back of the radio to remove. All right, so the radio is unhooked. We're totally done with this guy. We can set him off to the side. So once the screen has been removed and out of the way here, it's gonna expose two more seven millimeter screws. Go ahead and remove those. Now the rest of the dash bezel is just simply held on with clips. We can aid the removal with a panel tool, but you can actually kind of get your hands in here and just start trying to work it free. We can work this on out. And on the back of this panel, you're gonna have some various harnesses. Go ahead and disconnect those as well. With that pet bezel out of the way, now it's gonna expose the full bracket that holds on your screen here. We need to remove that bracket with the four seven millimeter bolts up and around the bracket. Okay, once that's removed, it's actually gonna expose the radio itself. Go ahead and disconnect your harnesses here. There's a little lock on your AM FM antenna. Remove the two seven millimeters holding in the radio itself. So with all this removed at this point of time, let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. Now here at the bench, the parts that we're using in our radio install today, first and foremost is the radio the customer has chosen to go with. It's this top of the line Alpine 11 inch float mount screen. It is the ILX 511 by Alpine. It includes both wireless CarPlay, Android Auto, and a giant screen to really upgrade the factory one that's currently installed in the vehicle. Now to install it in the factory location, we do need a bit of parts. First and foremost is the dash kit that's needed, and it's the Metra 107FD1B for Ford Transit vehicles of this generation. Both accommodates a single and a doubled in radio. Our flow mount screen actually has a single DIN chassis, so we'll use the pocket included within the kit. Wiring kit wise, we do need this Axis AXTC-FD3, and essentially this retains both your factory features, uh, like your steering wheel volume controls and factory backup camera in your transit vans. Now, speaking of the factory backup camera, you may need the Metra or Axis AXBUCH-FD1. Generally speaking with our harness, it does indicate that we don't need this, but we have it just in case. Now, your transit van will have two USB ports, one on top of the dash and one more in the center of the console. So we're using two of these USB GM1s that'll fit there. It takes the mini USB and converts it into a USB type A for us. And then finally, we have the Metra 40-EU10 antenna adapter. Now your parts may vary for different various trim levels. We can make those notes down in the description so you can have the right parts for your specific transit. 
All right, so what we've done here is we started prepping our wiring harnesses. Now this is the access harness that came in the box, and this is the radio harness that came with the Alpine. Now we've stripped both ends, and essentially here in theory we're gonna match color for color. Today we're gonna be soldering those connections, but if you don't know how to solder, we suggest butt connectors or even better crimp caps. Just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts as they're just not designed for an automotive application. In terms of matching color for color, for the most part, it's going to be the case. However, there's always just a few uh, potential opportunities that those colors may change between the adapter and the manufacturer of the radio. So always double check the function of the wire before you assume the color matches. All right, so we have finished soldering up our harness. Now, for the most part, it was color for color. Again, there's gonna be a couple of connections that's not the case. Now, Alpine is notorious for changing a couple of different colors, like a parking brake traditionally is a light green wire. Theirs is a yellow with a blue stripe, so that goes into light green. And then we have parking brake wire, which does follow the purple white, which is pretty common. But on the axis side, it actually is green purple. Um, and uh, everything else is pretty much color for color. A vehicle speed sense on this Alpine is a green with a white stripe. And on the axis side, it's blue with a pink stripe. So uh, again, always double check the function and the instructions of the wire before you assume the color matches. Everything else is color for color. As our connections are now cooled, we're gonna move our heat shrink up and over those connections and shrink it down with a heat gun. So with everything now heat shrunk and ready to go, just a couple of last things to note before we loom up our harness here. This is pinned for a center channel. We didn't have a center channel in our transit. Most transits don't generally. And so this center channel is fine. The only caveat to this center channel is a lot of the time the factory backup camera can be pinned in such a way that this blue wire in the center channel, but again, it's not a center channel, but the blue wire may be, need to be grounded if you have the version of your transit that doesn't have sync in order for the image on the screen to come out nice and clear. You may just have to ground this blue wire. Um, we have sync, so we actually will need to use that um, secondary camera harness that we showed you just a few minutes ago, and we'll show you where that connects and how to run all those wires. So we'll add a lot of those notes on the backup camera in the description of the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and loom up our all right, harness. So we have buttoned everything up. We tested taped it just like the harness came. Um, it's all nice and cleaned up here. If you have sync, this secondary backup camera harness that we mentioned here before is what you're gonna need. This essentially will um, plug into the sync module and the original sync harness will plug into this. And what this is going to do is generate your backup camera wire to your aftermarket radio and we just plug it into our aftermarket input. This is nice and long, this should be able to pass through and still plug in without any adapter or extension needed. It does have um, a backup camera ground. Again, if you have any distortion in your image or it's not coming in clear, you just simply ground this. And uh, it also has, and we've already loomed it, this secondary harness, which we don't need in our application here today. Um, so we'll just zip tie this away. So. You'll need this secondary harness if you have sync, and we're gonna show you where this plugs into the vehicle. With that all out of the way, the last thing to mention is your USB ports. Again, special note, if you have the factory Ford sync system, the USB ports found in this generation transit are generally all through a hub system, and that hub system won't allow just you to convert one of them into your own USB. Uh, that hub system is controlled through the factory for sync module and unfortunately there's no way around it at the time of this video for you to use one of these adapter ports even though if you unplug it you'll see on the sync module it should plug in and then this end goes to your aftermarket radio we've done some testing it just doesn't work now it's not a complete loss because as long as you keep that plugged into the sync module the usb those factory USB ports will still function just as a charge. So alternatively, the solution is we're just gonna run our own USB cables for wired CarPlay and Android Auto to a better location. We won't use the USB GM ones in, in 
our install here today because we have sync if you don't have sync you'll see the usb ports plug directly into the radio um, which we can show you right there on the screen since we have sync unfortunately they're not going to work in our instance um, so again a lot of different variations whether you have sync or not and again we're going to post all this information in the description the final thing for the radio itself is we need to go ahead and turn our attention over to getting everything mounted in the dash kit. So with the dash kit now all torn apart here, you have your back bracket that supports everything. You have your front bezel. You have uh, dash support conversion brackets as well as side bracket adapters. Now, because we are doing a non-Pioneer module radio, there's the two little wingies on these that we break off. And they look like this. We followed the instructions. We snapped them off. We didn't need them. So there's a little line there that we snapped them at. And then we bolted our brackets on using the hardware provided by the Alpine unit. So we have our two side bracket adapters on there. This separates here and allows us to have the space to seat our radio because this will bolt in first. This is just a beauty panel here. Now, it comes with a full doubled in. We had a piece of ABS plastic to seal in because there's no blank or anything that comes with it. Hopefully future versions of this will include a blank. And what we did is we just glued that in. Piece of a, uh, eighth inch ABS plastic. And it looks really nice. And then it'll allow our single den there at the bottom to poke out. So that was our solution here. And when we put this all together, it'll actually look really nice. What this does is this will now slide into this bracket we're going to get everything bolted up and then this is your last beauty piece you have to put on your three little plastic clips here that are included within the kit and we're going to grab our bracket adapters there and we're going to go install those first before we install everything else here all right so at this point with everything assembled as far as we can go here at the bench we are done let's head back to the van and start getting everything installed all right so now to get access to the sink module here go ahead and up and open up your glove box we got to pop this down. Now you can use a panel tool to relieve the two clips holding in the glove box, the tabs there at the top, or you can get your finger right in here. Go ahead and pull this out. We're going to start with one side. We're going to reach our hand in and I'll show you what I'm pushing here. There's my fingers. Pushing one tab. It's right here. And then we obviously can't get our fingers to the other side. So we'll use our panel tool kind of forcing the other side here okay so with the two side clips in we have this and really what we're pushing in is this guy we're just pushing it out of the way same thing with the other one but just with a panel tool and that's going to allow that just to sit down here but once that's down up underneath there's our cabin air filter then looking up there is our Ford sink module Obviously, we have sync, we have the module here, and that's held in with three 10 millimeter nuts. We've already removed two. We got one, two, and then looking over here, we're gonna have a third. We've removed two, they're 10 millimeter. Once you remove those, we can temporarily drop the sync module bracket down and access the harness needed to connect our backup camera T harness. So, with those three 10 millimeters now out, we're going to work this bracket on down just like so now we don't need to totally take it out that's enough for us to get to the main harness there and it's generally inside that port and it's plugged in right here we've already unplugged ours but that is your main port now that's where our T harness is going to plug into for the backup camera. Now this is the USB, but this is a hub system. You can't retain the factory USB hub system at the time of this video. This USB, it's a single one, but it controls the ports for both the one there in the center of the dash right above your cup holders and the one on top of the dash on the left hand side by the steering column. They run through the same USB port. Unfortunately, because it is on a hub system, there's no way for us to, to utilize that for our new radio. But it's not all a loss. If you keep it in, don't mess with it. It'll actually, the sync system will keep those ports as charge ports and you can leave those as is. So we're gonna leave the hub in here. Um, let's go ahead and get our T harness in there and then we can put the sync module back in place. Okay, looking at our harness adapter here. So this end will plug into the male end. And then this end plugs into the sync module. 
So we're gonna go ahead and make those connections. Okay, so we plugged our harness in, plugged in the other harness and they lock into place. Then we fed our video wire up into the dash. So we are done with the sync module, keeping everything else plugged in here. We can now reassemble the sync module bracket. All right, so let's go ahead and install our bracket here. Looks like he, they can only go one way, so. All right, so with our side brackets now in, we got our backup camera from the Sync T harness module. Now it does recommend for the programming of this, you start the vehicle, let it run, keep the driver's side door open, let it run for five seconds, plug these in, and then when it plugs these in, at the pace of a heartbeat, you tap volume up on the steering wheel. So one, two, three, four, five, and you just keep tapping up while you look at the light indicator built into the module here, and it'll go through a series of flashes. Once that's all done, and if this is also plugged into the radio, then the programming is done. You can stop hitting the buttons. It'll go through its rest of its flashes, and at that point, it's programmed to the vehicle and to your radio. Uh, we'll post up in the description as well as here on the video just that all written out so you can follow those instructions to program your module. We've actually already pre-programmed our module. So we can go ahead and plug our harnesses in here. And we'll have to figure out some uh, good just cable management as we put this all in once we get our radio installed. All right, next here, we can actually go ahead and reinstall our dash bezel here. So we made our connections. We spent about an hour trying to get everything to fit back in there. And we have, we, the radio's still just sitting in place. Uh, but before you put the radio in, you wanna snap in this bezel and essentially it'll snag these two upper clips and then it just clips in down to the bottom. And then you slide your radio in, make your radio connections and slide all the way in like we have. And then we're gonna put the four supplied silver screws in the dash kit into that position. All right, so with the radio in, now we can go ahead and get the rest of our screws in. All right, so that was looking awesome. Let's go ahead now with everything assembled. We've obviously done tests along the way, but uh, let's go ahead and do a final test here. Yep, perfect. Okay, everything's looking great. Now obviously we'll have to put our trim pieces up and around back behind the unit, but we'll do that quickly off camera. And so at this point of time, the new radio is in. It sounds awesome. Everything's be working. Volume up and down seem to be working. Track forward and track back. We got mute. Great. Now remember, you need to follow the programming instructions before you get everything reassembled just to ensure that everything's working properly before you spend all the time to snap everything in place. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. This one's a little bit more tricky, but following our steps should allow you to get you through the process. If you like any of the parts that we used in our video, we can link those down in the description of the video. Thanks again for watching. Hit the like button if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.